the molecular formula of the compound is the um, formula, the number of each element present uh, in the compound as we find it in nature. So for sucrose, Sucrose has the formula of C12H24O12. That's a disaccharide. Um, the empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of the elements in the compound. So this is our molecular. Lowest whole number, number ratio here, we divide by 12 and we end up with CH2O. So that's our empirical form. And empirical form is traditionally a stepping stone to get to the molecular form. So the molecular form is a form that we're primarily interested in. Um, so sucrose is a um, sugar, which is a uh, carbohydrate, and this is where carbohydrate comes from, carbon with, hyd with water, carbohydrate. Um, but we're going to uh, look at how to calculate the empirical formula and the molecular formula. So we're going to start off with the empirical formula. So starting from a mass percent composition, we have some um, rules. To uh, guide us along the way. And uh, so if we assume we have 100 grams, this is turns the percent numbers into grams without uh, using our calculator. We can use any number there, it doesn't have to be 100 grams. This just makes that first step without a calculator. Um, so the formula is a, a molar ratio, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking to get a whole number molar ratio which is our empirical formula. So once we have our grams, we divide each mass by the atomic mass to get moles, and there will be random number moles. So we're trying to figure out how to turn those random numbers into whole numbers. So the first step is we divide all the moles by the smallest value. So now we'll have one as our smallest value, and we'll have larger values. If we have a significant decimal, like a 2.5, that represents two and a half. So then we would multiply all the uh, moles again by the uh, denominator of the fraction. So we would be multiplying by two, that 2.5 turns into five, the whole number, and the other whole numbers turn into larger whole numbers. Um, so when we get close to whole numbers, we just round them to whole numbers, and we're using these whole numbers as subscripts. And this uh, a listing will be posted on the um, page in Canvas uh, before the videos. So let's uh, go through this. So we start off by assuming 100 grams. So that means for iron, we're going to have uh, 54.8. Grams. So 54.8% of 100 grams is 54.8 grams. Uh, we're going to divide this by the atomic mass. And we'll end up with moles. Um, Point nine eight one moles of iron. Our silicone, we have um, 13.8 grams divided by its atomic mass. We end up with a 0 0.491 moles of silicon. Uh, we have uh, for oxygen, 31.4 grams 
we divide by its atomic mass. And we have a 1.962 moles. And sometimes, uh, if we didn't have the silicon in there, we'd be just tempted to round to whole numbers. But it's always good to do this next step, even if it looks like we should go round to whole numbers. We want to divide by the smallest number, so that's dividing by the 0.491. And of course, that makes that smallest number one. And uh, these other ones come out to be a nice clean whole number. So we end up with a, uh, a two and a four. So that becomes our uh, subscript on the formula. So we have a Fe2 Si1. We don't have to write down one and then O4. So Fe2 SiO4 as the uh, formula for this compound. So let's do a molecular formula. So we're interested in the molecular formula and there's two ways to get there to the molecular formula. Hmm. So if we have the empirical formula already, uh, to get to the molecular formula, um, what we want to do is to do the um, molecular weight. over the empirical way. Let me write this out a little better. So and this ratio here should be a whole number. And then we multiply the empirical formula by this whole number. So uh, let me get the uh, empirical weight here. Four times 12.01 plus five times 1.08 plus two times 14.01 plus 16. So we end up with a, the empirical weight is a 97.10. I don't need a second decimal place, I don't have a pair, so we have a 194.2. That looks like it's gonna be a whole number. And that comes out to be a two. So now we're gonna multiply all these subscripts. So our molecular formula will be a C8, H10, N4, O2. So that's going from empirical to molecular formula. If we have our percent composition and the molecular formula, there is a, a quicker way of getting to it than calculating the empirical and then converting it to molecular. So the difference here is that what we're going to do is we're going to assume instead of 100 grams, we're going to assume the mass of one mole. So we have a 46.03 grams. So we take our grams and 
and multiply by the decimal form of the percent of that element for each element. So we've got uh, 26.1% divided by 100%. It's going to give us 0.261. We're going to do this for each of our elements. And that'll give us the mass component of that element. And let's just give us this gives us a so we get the mass component for each element. And we still need to convert into moles. So we're going to be dividing each one of these by its molar mass, its atomic mass. And for this calculation, we're expecting a whole number now at this step. So it's not going to be a random strange number, it's just going to be a whole number. So 12 divided by 12 is 1, 2 divided by 1 is 2, 32 divided by 16 is 2. And these are the subscripts on the compound for the molecular formula. So we have a CH2O2 for our uh, formula for this compound. That's the molecular formula. This also is a Lowe's whole number ratio. So this also is the empirical formula, but we calculated the molecular form in this case. So if we had uh, used the process down here, we would have gotten this answer and not this answer. 